Hey friends. So we've ended up with another child. We thought we were going to be okay, ended up being sick. And I thought what better day than today to sit down and talk about my five go-to tips of getting through homeschool when you're dealing with sickness or just a season of being really, really busy. So come sit down, have a chat with me, and let's share our secrets of how to get through training up our children, tackling homeschool when dealing with real life situations. I don't know if you could see this, but well, there's the reflection of my lights, but I have a cat climbing a tree out here as I was talking just a minute ago. Can you see him right there? I thought that was so funny. Anyways, I love sharing these vlogs each day with you guys and just where our season of life has us and what's going on and homeschool and being a homemaker and all of that. So if you're new here, please make sure when you subscribe to tap that notification bell. We've got these vlogs coming out every single day all year long. That is our family challenge. They're also all on a playlist. So if you guys want to go through and kind of watch from the beginning, you can do that as well. And um, trying to think of what we should vlog today. And to be honest, we had Virginia who was sick last week. Uh, Olivia had ran a little bit of a fever and we thought we were out of the woods. We thought everybody was okay. And then Olivia, the youngest who just turned five, she started throwing up. So we are not <laughs> out of this thing. We are still in the midst of it. We are all taking lots and lots of oil of oregano, which um, we haven't for the past month. Life has been crazy. We haven't been diligent with taking our supplements. And I think that's a big key of why we're getting this. But anyways, <sighs> Olivia is now sick. And so we're dealing with all of that here in the house today. And so I thought, what better than to just sit down, maybe not the very traditional sense of a vlog, but to have this mama chat, right? If we were all friends and we were hanging out, this is what we do, right? We just sit down and chat. And I love getting to do these types of videos with you guys. And I love reading your comments as we go along and seeing where you guys are at, and what you guys have going on. So feel free to comment away. And um, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, especially tis the season, you know, colds and flus and everything going around, I think just with, you know, for a lot of us, the weather isn't quite like you want to be outside and doing stuff. So we spend a lot more time indoors and sometimes just, you know, the season of whether it's sickness that you're going through or even just a season of busyness, right? Sometimes there's just a lot going on and it's really hard to juggle everything. Um, gosh, Lord knows I understand that. We go through that ourselves where I'm like, oh my gosh, there's just so many boxes that have to be checked off. I feel like I'm stretched so thin. We have so much going on, so much on our plates, which yes, we want to address that and try to take off as much as we can, but still sometimes there's just that level of, having to make do and having to get through it all. And how do we still nourish our children educationally and help in, you know, growing them and encouraging them and discipling them and equipping them? How do we do that in a season of busyness or sickness? And these are the top five things that might not seem like that big of a deal to you. I feel like whenever I share these with other moms who are just like, oh my gosh, how do I do it? There's so much to, to you know, try to deal with. These are the things that people a lot of times go, is that it? That can't be enough. I have to do more. But I feel like it's these little things, these underrated things that really can be so beneficial and so impactful. We don't have to do these over the moon, you know, amazing things all the time. We can do these little smaller things that really do add up and make a big difference, especially in training up our children and educating them and growing them as individuals, right? As their own person that they're becoming regardless of how old they are. And so these are the things that I try to make sure we have a good amount of in our day-to-day -day lives in general, but especially in seasons of sickness or just busyness, we really do unschool and rely on these things more instead of my being, you know, stressed and worried and trying to make sure every workbook and curriculum thing has been checked off the list. 
we kind of fall back into these things a little bit more. And, um, you know, I make sure that I'm not stressing myself out, but being able to take these little things and allow them to work in the lives of my children and just our family as a whole, as we go through this whole homeschool journey, right? So I think the first thing that um, really can be beneficial, and I understand that it gets a bad rap, but I think it can be beneficial, is TV that teaches, right? There are cool things out there on, on here on YouTube, on different streaming services, whatever it is that you watch. Most of it, yes, I agree. Across the board, most of it is hot garbage. Totally get that. Um, this is why we use YouTube Premium, so that way we don't see any ads. Yes, I have a code. You guys can get that down below. Click on that freebie, savings, and more. There's a code there to get you YouTube Premium. I think it's for like 99 cents or something for three months. And it means no ads, <laughs> which is the best thing ever because my kids can get on, we can watch stuff, and I don't have to worry about garbage coming before our eyes, right? So there are different things that we can do things that teach. Now, I think this is a really great way to find things that interest your children. I have some kids that are very creative. So we love watching these little like art videos and things like that. Um, videos on how to draw things and they'll sit there, you know, even if they're not feeling good, they can curl up on the couch with their drawing notebook and some pencils and learn to draw these amazing things. And then we send those to family members and things, you know, like they're able to engage in that way. I have a kid who is a huge history buff. Oh my word. And he'll sit there through history video after history video after history video, just soaking it all up and learning these different things. There's amazing sermons. Right now we're going through a Paul Washer family sermon series that we all sit down and listen to together. Um, just TV that teaches. Um, we love anything about, you know, nature, uh, animals, uh, different locations, different traveling things, things that allow us to, yes, maybe we're sitting down, we're resting, or maybe we're busy and I need something the kids can do, kind of just like like over by themselves, TV that teaches is a great tool that we can utilize. Yes, our kids can be on screens melting their brains. Absolutely, you should monitor that. They don't need to be on for long extended periods of time. They don't need to be watching nonsense. But our rule is, what are you learning? Are you learning something from it? Is your, is your mind being engaged in a positive way? All right, that's the type of TV that we are okay with. Now, the second thing that I think of that is such a great useful tool, and we're even using this, um, when you click that blue join button, we have our collective. And right now we're doing a mama bear collective where we are studying through mama bear apologetics together as a group. There's some amazing sisters in Christ over there. We're going through it, we're studying. We've got you know discussion and community and all of that over there. Um, and I love this because I love utilizing audiobooks. And that's another great thing to use, especially when you're dealing with a lot of sickness or just busyness, being able to bring in audiobooks. So for the littler kids, even going on YouTube and having, there's so many picture books and things that you can pull up and read and go through the picture book all the way up to, like for us with Mama Bear, you know, chapter books where you can, you know, be listening to all of that. I don't always have time to sit down with a book. I most always don't have time to sit down and do that. I also a lot of times have a lot going on. I'm too busy or maybe I'm just not feeling great. If I sit down with a book, I'm going to fall asleep, but I can sit down and listen to something or while I'm, you know, washing dishes and mopping the floor or whatever, I can have my earbud in and be listening to it that way. It's the same thing for my kids. A lot of times, you know, our son, while well, he's out mowing the lawn or doing some of his chores, he'll have his earbud in and be listening to something and learning that way. Audiobooks are a great way to do that. And for us, we would spend a lot of money on all the audiobooks that we like to listen to. And if we had it, that would be great. But what is so fantastic is YouTube has become such a great source of that. And again, YouTube premium, we get that each month so that we don't have to worry about ads. We can get on here, access a ton of content with no ads. We have a whole playlist, all of us each individually do, of the audiobooks we want to listen to. And so it is a really, really great tool for even while we're sick, even if we're busy, you know, whatever we have, we can tap into that and still be learning and growing and, you know, kind of having that. No, it's not the same as sitting down and reading a book, but a lot of times I actually gain more from an audiobook than I do from sitting down and reading on my own. So 
Just depends on how it works for you, but audiobooks are a total win in this house. The third thing that I highly recommend to kind of have in your back pocket to pull out when life is hectic or whatever it is, are games. There is so much that we can learn through games. Just playing, our kids learn so much. Even if it's not the most educational game in the whole wide world, the skills of communication, of working together, critical thinking, logic, you know, there's so many different skills that come into that. And so for us, we love having a lot of games, board games, card games, dice games. We have all kinds of games that we will pull out, especially when we're real sick, everybody's kind of laying around. Maybe if one kid's sick and the other ones aren't, we can all kind of be sitting around playing a game together. Um, especially if, you know, if I'm really busy, I have a lot on my plate being able to pull out games and get the kids started and then they can play and be occupied while I need to take care of whatever it is I need to be able to take care of. We take games with us. So even if, you know, you're out and about running appointments, you're going to be in the car a lot. There's many different games you can play, you know, even out and about. Um, so games are a big one. And in our house, we do video games too. Not a ton. And there's very specific games that our kids can play because there's a lot of junk out there. So we definitely stay very aware of that. But in our house, if it's something that we all can come together and play, then it's great, right? I'm more of the board game guy and dad's more of the video game guy, right? So they have their special kind of date time with dad every afternoon where he's finished up his work and he comes in and they all sit down and play together. Um, having those things again, where they're coming together, they're working together, they're having a great time. It's building our relationships with one another here in the family. We're using different school or different um, skills as far as, you know, critical thinking and logic and working together and whatever it may be, problem solving, you know, we're using those together and really just again continuing to engage our minds in some forward form of motion even through the sickness the chaos the busyness whatever it is that we have going on in our lives um, especially think about every time we've had a new baby or something like that and I need something that we can do while I'm healing for my c-section you know being able to have things like this that we can be engaging in we can be doing super win with using games now, the fourth thing that should not ever, ever, ever be just, I feel like that we don't realize how impactful this is. Um, and we tend to kind of just glance over this like, eh, it's not really doing anything, especially even when we're sick or we're really busy, we're on the go, we have a lot happening, there's chaos in our life, whatever it may be. Have conversations. There's something so, so, so important about just, I don't, I don't care, from the youngest child you have to the oldest, even if they're adults out of the house, making time for meaningful conversation. Your phone is down. You're not distracted. You know, you're not doing anything else. You're just there to connect, to conversate, to share ideas and feelings and questions and maybe you just need to vent over whatever has been going on having meaningful time of conversation with our children individually all of us as a family together making time for conversation uninterrupted no screens distracting everybody i'm bad at that right when my kids talk to me i want to make sure i set my phone down so they know they have my undivided attention having conversations are such amazing learning tools that I think we are often quick to overlook. We're great at looking at curriculum and websites and all of these different things and buying resources and manipulatives and different stuff like that. But what about the simplicity of just one-on-one -on -one conversation with our children? So that is a really, really, really big one that I've thought of this a lot lately with just having kids that aren't feeling good. And so I'm spending a lot of time just on the couch, snuggling sick babies. And we're just sitting there as I'm, you know, stroking their head or, you know, giving them loves and just talking, just having those conversations there. Now my five-year-old, I get some pretty crazy conversations, but that's okay. It's so meaningful for her to have that where I'm there to just talk. Same thing with my son. I feel like he gets short change so often because the girls are younger and they demand a lot more of my attention but we get little pockets of time throughout the day where he just 
gets to chat with me and I get to learn about, you know, things that are weighing on him, things he's concerned about, things he's working on and passionate about. Being able to learn these things and have those conversations are just so special. And I always want to try to remember to make them more of a priority and to have meaningful attempts at making conversation with my kids throughout the day. And to not discredit that is just being us talking, but to understand what a valuable teaching tool that that really, really, really is. Now, the fifth thing that, again, I think really gets um, kind of just, we don't give it the credit that it should, is especially in times, look at the cat's back, <laughs> isn't it cute? Um, especially in times of just busyness or sickness or, you know, the weather's just bad so everybody's stuck inside is, let boredom exist. Boredom is a great teacher. Allowing our kids to get to that point. We live in a world where everything is just so instant, right? I, I get right on, I don't even have to wait for the dial up to work anymore, right? I just, I touch it and I'm instantly connected, be it through my computer, my TV, my phone, my tablet, you know, whatever it may be. We want this like instant gratification, right now, 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 now. And I think there's something so amazing. This is why I'm so big on minimalism and simplicity and just simple living in general. But our kids are so used to getting that. They say they want it, they get it right now, right? They, they demand your attention, they turn this on, they whatever it is. Allowing that boredom to exist, that breeds creativity, it breeds imagination and thought and, and so much that is so underdeveloped in most children today, heck in most adults, because we're so used to getting this instant gratification. But I think allowing the boredom to just be is fantastic. Yes, we have times when we use the TV. We have times when we use the video games or the laptop or whatever. We do have times for those. We use them in our home and I think they can be great tools. But just as important, we have times where those things are off limits. They're done. They're put away. It was a tool. We used it for its purpose and now we're done with it, right? I don't carry around a drill at all times. I have it for when I need it, but then when I'm done, I put it away and I go use something else. And it's the same way here where it might be difficult, especially if your kids aren't used to it, but having those periods of times where you say, okay, we're done with that. Go be bored. I don't care, <laughs> right? Like you're not getting on the screen. You're not doing this, especially kids. If they've been sick and then they kind of need a little bit more before they go back to being crazy again, I go, hey, you're going to have to just hang out, relax, pull some toys up on your bed, read a book, draw, right? Just sit here and think. I don't know. Count the, you know, dots on the ceiling, whatever it is. Allowing boredom to exist is not only okay and your kids are going to survive, but I would argue that it's a really, really valuable tool that our kids need spurts of boredom throughout their days to help them develop and grow as individuals. And so maybe you are busy. Maybe you got a lot going on. Maybe you're sick, right? And you just can't put together all the stuff. I think we're so often entertaining our kids that when we can't keep up with that demand, we're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And that's when screens and stuff and all of that comes out. But instead, I would challenge you to say, hey, you're right. I am sick. I do need to sit down, or I am busy with this, or I have this going on, or whatever it may be. Go be bored, right? If the weather's not good and they can't go outside, well, then go in your room, right? Find a way to occupy yourself. That's a really valuable tool that you need to learn. And so using that is going to teach them a lot more than just coming up with something to keep themselves occupied. And so I highly recommend we all find times to let that boredom engage <laughs> and let the learning that comes from that pursue it. You so know? for me, those would be the top five things that I have been relying on heavily, especially, oh, well, it's been very busy and chaotic for our family over the past few months. Um, but especially with the sickness, you know, we've been like the past week of dealing with sickness off and on, especially for the past handful of days. And now with Olivia being sick, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit more. Um, but those are definitely my top things that I like to pull out of my pocket when it comes to getting through life and all of the stuff with sickness or busyness or just a strain in that season. So I pray that this can be a blessing and an encouragement for you here today. Um, we'll see. Hopefully tomorrow's vlog can be a little more exciting, but I guess that depends on how much 
sitting on a couch snuggling sick kiddos that I do. Um, but otherwise, I hope to see you guys back here tomorrow. Check out all the other stuff that we have there on the channel or link down below in the description. And come over and join us for this mama bear study. It is so fantastic. I am loving it. Um, like I said, we had an introduction video last week. First video went out on Monday. And then, the so yesterday, the second video comes out tomorrow. Um, and it has just been... It's so great. It's such a good book and such an important topic. So come and join us if you haven't already. Otherwise, I will see you all right back here come tomorrow. Bye, guys. Whoa, did we just become best friends? Because I think we did. I'm so glad you hung out with me. High five. I appreciate it. Some more videos if you want to watch. A subscribe button that should pop up somewhere if you want to come. And, you know, make sure you tap the little notification. See when we got new videos coming out. I would greatly appreciate it. It was fun hanging out with you guys. Come see us in whatever else you watch that we're doing. And, uh, you know, we'll have a good time.